go with landing lights. That's pretty self sensitive in that study. Beautiful track tonight. Yeah, baby. And it's very nice. Hey guys, Rich here. Welcome back to the RC Informer YouTube channel. And today I have a really nice airplane to show you guys. Uh, coming from, from E Flight and Horizon Hobby. This is a sizable airplane, it's their 1.5 meter air tractor just it's it's made after the very famous crop dusting airplane and this is the turboprop version of it the original was actually a recip radial engine but this is such a nice rendition of the model it flies fantastic on either a three or a four cell pack three cells plenty of power four cell it has some rocket like performance so um, also it assembles with only 12 screws that's all you need to, to get this thing together absolutely zero glue to assemble this which is really nice all the decals are applied on it and everything and it goes together really quick so this video is going to be a complete unbox assembly and setup and how to get this thing um, out to the flying field so in the description below this video, most importantly, uh, in the description and in the comments section below, I'm going to have a hyperlinked chapter list. So if you want to watch the video front to back, you can, but if you want to skip ahead or go back to something you missed or if you're building and you want to see a particular part, I'm going to hyperlink all of those sections in like a table of contents. So you can click and go forward back without having to necessarily even scroll the wheel so uh, or scroll the little slider there. So I'm going to show you where all that stuff is at. So um, anyway, a couple announcements too. We just started an Instagram page and a Twitter page, Twitter, Twitter account too. So if you guys want to follow us on that, that would be awesome. That really helps us out. I'll put those links in the description below. Below, so you can guys, guys, guys go, go right to it. Just search for RC Informer and you'll find us as well. Um, also, I'll have links in the description below also that you guys can purchase the airplane. If you do that through our link, you click on our link, put it in your cart and buy one. That does support our channel. We really appreciate that. Otherwise, to support us, folks, like, subscribe, comment. That's awesome. Share our videos. Hit that notification below uh, bell in the lower right-hand corner of the video, and that that uh, that will inform you when we put new videos out. So I'm gonna have flying demos on this thing for you guys. It's gonna be uh, we're gonna have uh, uh, demos on grass pavement as we put them out and even on floats once we get the floats because Horizon's out of stock. And all those videos will be on the RC Informer YouTube channel and you can also check in the upper right hand corner of all of our videos now. In the upper right hand corner right now if you click on that uh, that white information eye, that card, that'll drop down a menu right now. And you can do it while we're talking too, it won't stop the video. It'll, draw, it'll drop down a menu of all the videos in the series on this airplane. So we're not only going to do the unbox, assembly, and setup today but we're also gonna have all those flight demos for you in those links to the right so you guys can access the, the video series on all uh, the series on all the videos on this airplane right here and on every video uh, that we put out on this airplane so anyway folks uh, uh, without further delay let's uh, go ahead and get on to the unboxing setup uh, build and setup of this uh, really nice uh, air tractor coming from Horizon Hobby 
Hey guys, Rich here at RC Informer. Today I have a really sweet airplane coming from the uh, E-Flight lineup over at Horizon Hobby. This is their 1.5 meter air tractor. This is probably one of the most versatile airplanes that E-Flight has because you can use it as, as both a training plane and a pretty powerful, pretty good performing uh, sport aerobatic airplane as well. And in addition, you have options to fly it as a, uh, a float plane or a plane on skis if you want to get those optional uh, items. And not only that, it's versatile as a three or a four cell airplane. So almost anybody with three or four cell packs, I think probably 2,200 up to 33,000, 4,000 probably will fit in here. The plane is also highly visible. Uh, it has really nice wingtip lights. It has two landing lights up front, nice big wheels for landing on really any surface. So it really is a go anywhere, do anything, just fun airplane that you can probably fly in all kinds of wind. Plus, it's AS3X. It has the AS3X flight stabilization system uh, along with um, the safe select. So it, it's a wing leveling system, pitch leveling system that you can activate, and it's all included in one package. All you have to do is add a battery and bind this up to your uh, spectrum radio and you're, you're good to go. So uh, I'm really excited to get this one out there and we'll have this one at uh, probably Seth, Joe Nall, and all in the falls to come. Uh, again here, easy to fly with the AS3X and optional safe select, three to four cell com uh, compatible brushless motor and authentic details, functional stuff like LED lights, flaps, and oversized tires. So there's a quick look at the floats and so forth. And uh, let's get in here on the specifications on this thing, uh, folks. Um, you can see here there's two versions of this thing, plug and, ply, plug, plug and play, where you add your own receiver. Bind and fly, which is what this one is, which has the uh, AS3X uh, stabilized receiver in here with the safe select. So we'll take a look real quick. Uh, yeah, there's a part number right there if you guys do want to order one of these. If you buy them through my links in the description below, you're not only getting a nice airplane, but you are supporting your RC Informer YouTube channel because we do get a pre uh, little commission for that. And folks, we do appreciate you supporting our channel by doing that. Just uh, uh, click on the link below, add it to your cart, purchase it, and you're supporting our channel. Again, we appreciate that, folks. Um, the motor on this thing, I wrote it in here, 800 kV, so it's got some good spin to it. That's already installed. ESC is a 50 amp uh, brushless uh, 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 ESC as well. That's already installed. Servo, six micro metal gear. Those are already installed. And uh, receiver, it's required, of course, on the pl uh, plug and play, but the bind and fly, it's already co included. And it's an AR636 uh, with AS3X and safe technologies, which we'll talk about when we fly. But that's installed in this one. Transmitter. Uh, a full five or six channel uh, DSMX or two compatible, that's required. Battery, once again, here you go. Three or four cell, 2200 to 3200 with an EC3 or IC3 uh, connector. That's a requirement. Of course, you need a charger to charge everything. So uh, a couple things all the way around. Nice picture on the box there, taking off and landing on grass. I know this is going to be fun especially on that kind of a surface surface and then here are some of the features on this thing let's look at the dimensions actually you can see here a whopping 59 inch wingspan 1500 millimeter and a 38 inch uh, 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 length front to back and um, let's see uh, again spectrum uh, receiver uh, is uh, is in this thing with needing a, a with DSMX technology again it has safe select AS3X stabilization uh, we talked about the motor, we talked about lights, it has really nice robust landing gear, optional floats and skis sold separately, metal gear servos with adjustable linkage, details, lights and all that. So anyway, this is basically, if you guys are familiar with uh, Dusty Crop Hopper <laughs> in the, uh, the Disney plane movies, that's essentially uh, where, uh, where they got uh, Dusty from was these air tractor airplanes so uh, and once again just a quick review this does have AS3X flight stabilization system in it that activates at quarter throttle when you advance your throttle and really basically takes the wind out and makes it easier to fly and then you have the optional safe select which we'll set up which is basically a pitch and a roll self-leveling basically pitch and roll 
limiter with self-leveling capability. So really sweet, and we will uh, we will set that up. So aside from that, folks, I'm going to get this thing uh, out of the box uh, for everybody. And what we're going to do is I haven't actually opened this thing, so this is this is going to be the first time. It's a a different box in this thing. And let me go ahead and uh, just kind of unzip these things. Let me get the uh, the tape off of this thing, and let's see uh, what we got. You can see how nicely this thing is all packaged in here in bags. It really is impressive. There's two sides to this box that uh, uh, is very different than some of the packaging we're used to seeing. Instruction manual. This looks like these are the horizontal stabilizers. Let's just get this all out real quick here. There's uh, the propeller right in here, which may come out of the other side, actually. But I'm impressed. This is very nicely bagged, very nicely packaged under here. Let's see if we can get this out of here. It's got a little piece of wood in there for something. Not sure exactly what that is. Oh, that talks about it. says uh, here, that's kind of nice. It's uh, plugged in there. Let me see. Uh, I'll read that to you. It said... Uh, it says here for packaging uh, only, uh, not for flight. So they stuck this in there to keep the thing from moving around in there. So really kind of nice, uh, nice touch they have there. Let's put that, uh, put that down there. And then the other side of the box you can see is the same kind of deal. You have to, you got to cut this thing open. So we'll cut this side right here, and we'll cut this side right here. So again, my first time out of the box here, folks. We'll get this out of here, and let's see what we got. We got. Uh, Right here we got the main wing panels, nicely packaged. It's very nice how they have this this uh, this uh, put in here. You got your main spar here. We've got uh, let's see, we've got uh, landing gear right here. Let's get this out of here. And it is a three-bladed prop, which is why I couldn't get that out. Um, you got your hardware package right here with your tail wheel, bind plug, screws, and all that stuff. If I can get this off of here, there, there there's that. And then the propeller, real nice in a three-blade. Uh, with the spinner on it already. So anyway, folks, let's uh, go ahead and lay all this stuff out and uh, we'll take a look at everything in closer detail. Now that I got all the parts uh, laid out that came out of the box, it's clear that this thing is gonna assemble very quickly. Only a few screws. I think there's uh, four screws for the wings. Um, I think there's just two for the tail, and they actually snap together. Uh, there's two or so screws, three screws, four screws for the landing gear. And then you put your prop on, and, and that's kind of it. There is a little tail wheel assembly stuff, a few screws there. But for the most part, that's it. There's no gluing. Uh, the, the overall finish of the airplane is pretty, pretty awesome, and, and, and uh, I'm impressed with it. I can't wait to get this one out fly it and have a lot of fun with it. It's going to be that kind of an airplane. Especially great for dusk flying because of the the amount of lights that are on it. Uh, down here at the bottom, fuselage is uh, all set up with the uh, motor, uh, speed controller, uh, rudder and elevator servos are already mounted. Your wings are already set up to go with the wingtip lights. Um, wireless plugs, all you have to do is plug this uh, wing in and there's no real wires. They already plug in, you can see down there, to the wing panels. Uh, aileron and, and uh, flap servos, rods, horns, linkages, they're already installed and it's ready to go. The paint finish is nice. You got your horizontal stabilizers right here and there is a little spar right there in the bag that connects the two of those together. There's your main wing spar, your landing gear with big tires on it, already assembled, ready to go. Prop and spinner, little decal uh, set there. And uh, you got your instruction manual, and that's, that's really about it, folks. I'm going to get right in on this and show everybody this thing. I'll start off here with the, uh, the landing gear here first. Um, you can see underneath here that there is right here a um, slot here for your uh, rear float mount. Uh, there's a, a, a slot here, it looks like, for your front float mount if you go with the optional floats see the cooling holes under here. And what I'm going to do is just show you the landing gear here real quick. This is the first time I'm looking at this too. Uh, but you can see how this thing just sort of plugs right on in here. I think it just settles right in there. It's a little bit of a tight fit. And then you got two screws. And that's it, folks. Landing gear is on the airplane with two screws, and that's really about it. Just stick the two in there, and uh, you're good to go. We'll look down in there and see if it uh, looks like there are... As I'm looking in there, there's metal threads backed up by uh, both a little bit of wood and a plastic doubler. So you got nice machine screws that get all that uh, thing together. I'll go ahead and put the landing gear down here. Uh, let's start up front. Really nice. Look at the look at the finish. It's uh, pretty nice. It's got some rivet detailing. Probably could have a little more detailing, but it doesn't really need it, folks. I mean, it's an air tractor and 
it's going to be, uh, man, I like the front of this thing. This is one of those sort of reverse mount motors where the mount is on the front and then it bolts through and the motor comes in sort of through the back of the mount. And then this one has um, um, one of those kind of grab connectors. It's not, uh, it's not where you use a set screw or something. You just tighten it on. I forgot what you call those things. Uh, but here's your, uh, your landing lights. There's two of them in there. You got your uh, ESC going down in there. Nice cowling um, that draws air in gets everything over the battery compartment and then out these holes so uh pretty impressive i like the uh, smoke uh, or sorry the exhaust stack deca uh, detail and uh, those are for a pt6 because this is a turboprop airplane uh with a reverse mounted free flow uh turbine on the full scale and they've uh went ahead and they've uh, added the proper curving to the pt6 uh uh, uh, you know, turbine engine exhaust stack. So really pretty cool all the way around. Um, I like uh, all the scoops, louvers, details. I don't know what this is on an air tractor. I'm not sure what it is, but they used it to double as a, uh, as a hatch uh, cover. So we'll get in there. Looks like there's a hatch right there. Um, and then uh, as we go along the bottom, you can see your wing plug-ins, your main wing spar right down here. That plugs right through here. You slide your wings right on in there. And your connections are made for your ailerons, your flaps, and your lights. And then two screws go in right from the underside through those little, uh, those little detents. So pretty slick. I really, uh, really like this. It's pretty nice. Um, nice sticker application, 502HH, for probably for Horizon Hobby. And uh, you can see how nice everything is here. Hinges are, look pretty nice. These are a different kind of connector. These uh, kind of snap on. You peel them off the side. I might throw some fuel tube over that just for a little extra security. Uh, an interesting thing about the hinge, um, it's sort of a foam type hinge, but as I looked at it closer, they actually backed it up with traditional style, more CA hinges. You can see that there's actual hinges in there that are CA type hinges that go in there. Um, if I were to take my best guess, uh, this may be an improved version where initially this airplane, again, this is my speculation, where initially they might have had just foam hinges and they decided to uh, uh, you know, put regular uh, CA type hinges. There's three of them, one down here, and over, uh, there's one up top, one in the middle, and then one down here. And then there is a plasticky hinge there that actually with a screw holds that all together, which is perfect because this is where your tail wheel mounts on with some springs and the tail wheel can be under a lot of load and if we had all that stress on that hinge it would probably pull that out but they backed it with a nice plastic fitting so it's going to be tough nice plastic doubler here for your rudder so they did a really really nice job with that i, I do like the application of the decals or the stickers i like the color and uh, here is where you have these little kind of click mechanisms here where your horizontals they're going to plug right in here with a little carbon spar through that hole there's your carbon spar and you don't screw your horizontals in they snap in place and then you secure one little screw here for the struts because the uh, horizontal stabilizer actually has horizontal stabilizer struts so and there's one screw that's going to go in there so we'll get that tail wheel assembled and all that and uh, again here's your uh, your linkage here where you're uh, sort of a not a z-bend but an l-bend with a nice keeper on there again different style than we're used to seeing but it looks pretty robust and uh, i probably will throw a piece of fuel tubing right around that to help keep that on but overall pretty nice pretty nice detail on the fuselage i like it there's a uh, there's a pilot in there it looks like he's not only been uh been uh, spraying but maybe inhaling a little bit of uh, crop dusting uh, stuff so uh, but uh, but he looks pretty stiff in there he uh, he ain't going anywhere so but at least he's different looking than some of the pilots we're used to seeing so uh, inter interesting uh, uh, cockpit detail in there a little bit uh, a little sterile looking but uh, but oh well folks it's going to be a uh, it's a crop dusting type plane so anyway uh, whatever this mechanism is on a crop duster which somebody can probably tell me when you pull that forward that acts as the latch and the latch has a nice ramp so we can close this and lock it into place so pretty slick how they did that um, there is a tongue and groove in the back you can see your latch with your ramp right there that slides that thing into place and uh, and that's it there's a big big canyon in this thing so you can put if you needed a huge battery you probably could but probably not going to do anything uh, tremendous but you can see what that latch looks like it's a little brass latch deal and then uh, here's your servos they're 13 gram they're mounted uh, they're ready to go looks like uh, there are two tubes 
which is very different in design. I do like the way they did it. There's a tube here, and there's a tube there, and oh man, they have set them up 90 degrees to each other already, and they're not touching anything. They're insulated with, uh, which actually looks like clear straws, but looks like they taped them in there, and uh, they're there to minimize signal loss, so somebody must be watching what I'm doing on my channel, because man, they really... Uh, Really did a nice job laying those antennas out. I'm impressed. See a little carbon rod down in there, carbon um, uh, that goes all the way in here to strengthen the fuselage. So, again, tough airplane here. Uh, again, 13 gram servos. There's your uh, AS3X uh, receiver, stabilized receiver with also right here is a bind button. Listen here. That's a bind button. So, you can use a bind plug or a bind button to, to bind this thing. So, and uh, that looks like your BEC, your battery eliminator circuit, probably right in here. And then uh, your ESC wires come up through here. It looks like initially this tray may have been meant to slide, but it's actually glued in place. So you just kind of Velcro your battery down here. Uh, and uh, Or you may even just, I may even do a shelf liner. We'll kind of see how that works out. But they got battery straps on there ready to accept your three and four cell battery. So uh, really nice overall, folks. Get the canopy back on. Real impressed with this thing, folks. It's pretty, pretty darn sweet. So let's put that down. Let's go ahead and get a spar and a wing, and we'll talk about this. The ruggedness of this wing, it has a heavy feel to it. I don't see any spar slots running through there, but it's clear that there is some spar in this thing. As I try to flex this, it's rigid, and I can tell that this is going to be a fun plane to fly due to the rigidity of this thing. Really sweet, really nice overall. You can see the carbon spar right here, how this is going to go into that slot. Okay, that's going to go through your slot in your wing, and then the other one goes on and they connect together. So, pretty nice the way that's designed. It's pretty robust overall. And let's take a look at the end of this thing. Here's all your connectors right here. One's aileron, one's flap, and one's probably for the lights. They're already ready to go. You just plug this whole thing in, you put two screws. Uh, probably right under here, and that secures uh, your wing into position. Uh, those little plug-ins right down there go right into these uh, two slots right here, and then your screws go all the way through that. So rods, horns, linkages already installed. It looks like we have a, uh, a contact cemented on hatch cover, which is fine if we need to get in there. Peel your hatch cover off and then re-cement it in place when you're done with it. Um, also, hinges. Check it out. There's your proper style hinges. CA hinges. There. There there and there there's four of them on there and these are all already set up and, and ready to go real nice all the way around they're not just foam hinges they're uh they're proper ca type hinges flaps are really nice these are your uh your slotted type flap borderline on fowler uh, fowlers usually follow a track but this is probably a, a combination of the two where this is a uh, like a split flap and semi fowler it's kind of neat it's sort of a little bit of of both Lots of airflow can get through and around that, and uh, just a very, very high lift, probably flap, so it'll slow down nicely. And then another detail that I really like on this airplane is the uh, the wingtip lights. It looks like there's actually, if I'm not mistaken, there's two LEDs in here. You got your green one facing forward, and these may even be flashers. I'm not 100% sure, but white ones on the tip, and uh, they just did a tremendous job. Top panel of this wing, only minor voiding, but for the most part, Panel lines are real nice. It's nice and smooth. Some access covers. But uh, overall, really slick. Wing panels, awesome. Really like how they did this. In fact, this one almost may be a hollow wing. It looks like it separates right along here. But super, super nice wing. Really, really rugged. This thing has some a little bit of weight to it. So it's got a, a good feel of strength to it. And then we'll get to the uh, horizontals here. Horizontals are pretty nice, too. You can see how well these are very thin foils, really thin air foils, but really tough. And once again, folks, there's your CA hinges, one there, one there, and one there. Again, it looks almost like this plane initially was meant to have meant to have foam style hinges or something, but they went ahead and actually put CA hinges in there, so it's got some really nice hinges. Little reinforcement here, carbon fiber in the wingtip, because this part, this is a, this is what you call a, a balance tab. There's normally in, in full scale airplanes, there's a there's a tab, there's a weight in here to help prevent some flutter. So, but in a model airplane, that tends to rip off real easy. So they put some structure in there, structure in here with a carbon rod going through there, and uh, again, that carbon rod is a little one in the bag that joins the two of these 
together. So one goes in one side, one goes in the other. Spar tube runs right through here. Here's your, uh, your strut right here. And the spar connects the two of these together. But really nice fit. These fit together very well. And it makes for a really nice horizontal stabilizer. Horizontal strut. You can see there's a little hole right in there. That's the hole that you put a screw right through that little plastic piece down there on the side rear of the fuselage and that joins your strut. So not only do you have a little spar in here for structure, but um, I'm pretty sure that these these uh, spars right here, or these, these, these struts, these horizontal stabilizer struts, um, those are functional. So you really got to attach those properly. But real nice, these just snap on uh, with the exception of those little screws there at the end. So real, real nice all the way around. And then the prop, I'm impressed with this. This is almost like a I think it's a glass reinforced prop. It's pretty tough. Uh, and then you can see it's got your uh, your uh, your kind of, um, I, I keep forgetting what these are called. I, I just can't remember what it is, but this is the kind that uh, you attach, you tighten it, it squeezes down on the shaft, and it uh, and it grabs a hold of that. So that, that will come to me shortly when I remember what those are called. Uh, but uh, really nice prop and spinner. Very tough. I mean, this thing is thick, and it's kind of hard to bend. So uh, really, really nice prop all the way around. And then we've got a little bit of a, we've got a decal package they give you from Horizon right here that you can put on whatever you want to put on. And then here's our hardware package. There's our horizontal uh, stabilizer um, uh, spar, some tailwheel linkages, and a few screws because there's almost nothing to get this together. There's your uh, tailwheel that goes together assembly with a few more screws and springs. There are springs on the tailwheel. It uh, looks like there's a little bind plug in there. And uh, that's it for the hardware package, folks. Uh, now we're on to, uh, to the instruction manual. There is an addendum in here. You always want to look at the addendum that you get first with these uh, Horizon planes because sometimes they change something in the manual. And really all this is is servo arms. Locational linkage arms incorrect in the manual. So they show you right here. There's different languages. Really the only part we're looking at is just really right. Uh, actually, that's the, uh, that's the German one. Where's the... Uh, well, anyway, you get the gist of it. Let's <laughs> there's a couple different languages here. Anyway, it shows uh, it shows the elevator right here and where those holes are supposed to be. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that probably during the flight demo. Uh, but overall, uh, instructions, quick start guide. They give you center gravity, 65 millimeters after the leading edge. They give you some rates. You can see all the parts we just talked about. You got your dimensions right there, 59-inch wingspan. It's going to be a nice size airplane. Got your brushless motor, 13 gram servos. It kind of covers all that. And then to the basic construction, you'll see how easy this is by looking at it. There's your landing gear with two screws. I went ahead and, uh, and highlighted this. There's your uh, horizontal stabilizers and elevators that go right on. They snap in place. Uh, you can see how nice and easy that is. And then you can see your, uh, your linkages there. And then, of course, right here, there's your, uh, your two screws, folks, that uh, put your, uh, your struts in place for your horizontal stabilizer. And then uh, wings go on with the spar right in the middle. Four screws. You're done with that. There's your prop and uh, prop and spinner right there, uh, with the uh, the prop uh, adapter. Uh, and then uh, and then we get on to uh, some of the details. Computerized transmitter setup. They go into all the rates, how to set it up depending on your radio. I'll be using a DX9, so. They talk about flap travel, elevator to flap mixing, which is really nice. They've got that in there, 6% and 10%. So they went into some detail, flap speeds in there and everything. And, uh, and then, again, CG is right there. They, they, they go into that. I'll talk about that a little more during the flight. And then um, let's see, um, using the, uh, the bind button for, uh, this is for, uh, for binding. They talk about using the bind bl plug and the bind uh, bind uh, button as well so you get the button on the left plug on the right and that's as easy it is to bind safe select switch assignment real easy to do um, and uh, let's see measure elevator travel from elevator trim tab so they give you some good notes here to talk about the flap travel and again uh, your rates and throws on your uh, flight controls there and then uh, AS3X uh, directional control test. We'll talk about that during the flight. And uh, in-flight trimming. Hold everything. Once you trim it, let it stay there for three seconds before you move the controls and set everything up. And that's it, folks. Really easy, really clean manual. This thing is going to go together uh, really fast. So let's go ahead and get a uh, screwdriver, and I'll show you how easy this thing is to put together. 
The first step of assembly is uh, just to get the landing gear on the airplane. It seems to be the easiest thing to start with. And also, um, the tail wheel uh, actually doesn't even, isn't even in the instruction manual how to assemble it. It actually shows it already on the airplane. So they give you this little mechanism that you uh, screw down here where these uh, springs go in there. And um, But I don't see actually these easy connectors anywhere on the box. So um, I decided just to, for now anyway, just to remove them. I may put them on later if I find out they're necessary. What I didn't like about them is, is that the spring um, seems to really get pinched um, by this, uh, uh, by this, by these easy connectors, and it almost seems like these easy connectors were really intended uh, almost for push rods or, or almost like, uh, like a. Uh, like a wire system or something. So uh, what I'm going to do is put it on without it, and it's really just this uh, this simple of a thing. There's these little teeny tiny screws that go on here. They're really, really microscopic, so you need like a really, really tiny screwdriver, as you can see here, to get these, uh, these things on. I'll start one uh, going on here, uh, just doing this real time here. We'll get these in place, and it's a very, very small screw that you have to put on. So we'll get this thing uh, going down in there. And uh, if I decide to put those easy connectors back on at a later time or during the flight or if I don't like it the way it is, I'll just put them back on. I'll show it to you probably in the flight video or something like that. So then next the tail wheel goes on. We just kind of put that right down in here, slide that thing into a position. And there are these two pretty deep threaded screws. You can see here there's a, there's a lot of a uh, a lot of really um, um, coarse threads on here, and uh, they go into plastic. So that kind of makes sense the way that uh, these are meant to go in there because you want a good bite on there. There's two washers too as well. See if I can get this thing to to bite in there. It looks like it's going in there nice now. Um, it is pretty tough. I can feel it really, really biting that plastic quite a bit. And uh, let's see if I can get the second one to go in there. It's the first time I'm getting these things in there. So you want to be careful not to slip because if you slip, you can end up kind of dinging the uh, dinging your foam there. So these should bite down pretty hard, and they should come to a, a positive stop because um, you got this uh, aluminum landing gear piece. And uh, it's, uh, it's actually biting down into that plastic, and you can really feel it. So it's a very positive lock on there. And then I'm going to take the two springs that are provided here, and uh, we're going to put those in place. So uh, you can see here, uh, one just goes on here, one goes on here, and I think that's really about all you need. It seems like this thing locks in place better this way, um, using those easy connectors. It really pinches and really bites into the metal. And uh, maybe that's a good way of doing it. I have no idea. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll try it out this way because this is how it shows on the box. And uh, I don't really see those easy connectors on the box. Now, I'll probably take a pair of pliers, too, and just bend these uh, over so they'll, uh, in fact, I can just use my fingernail. So they stay in place. In fact, I'll probably even take a little bit of uh, foam tack right here. And uh, I'll probably put just a, uh, later on, I'll put a dab of foam tack probably right here, right here, just to keep those from coming out so we, so we don't lose those. But it seems to me that uh, this is just a really good way to do it. And again, I didn't see those easy connectors on the box anywhere. So um, then we just get the main landing gear on it. I'll move this thing uh, uh, in such a way that we can see that. And all it is is the landing gear is pretty straightforward and pretty simple to put on the, uh, put on the airplane. Let me move the camera here just a tad bit. And we're going to take this and just kind of pop it down into place. It really fits quite nicely on there and there's a couple of uh, machine screws just some three millimeters here and we'll drop those in the hole and uh, these things uh, tap okay so they are machine screws uh, there are some uh, metal threads down in there and we'll put that in place so we get that on those bite in real nice and uh, let's see that's about it uh, for getting the uh, the landing gear on the airplane the next part of assembly is uh, really just getting the elevator in place. You can see that this is sort of a, a snap catch mechanism type of a deal. And there is a spar that does go through this hole to join the two halves together. I took that spar uh, ahead of time and just sort of rounded both the corners a little bit, just so it fits in a little bit better because I noticed it was uh, uh, sort of a little bit tight going on there. And uh, you can see here your, uh, your horizontal stabilizer and elevator how this thing fits right in. It goes into this plastic doubler and it actually joins up 
this bar here through this plastic doubler and kind of turns it into one. And then you also have additional support through this strut. And you can see this simply just goes on like this. You pop this thing uh, down into place. You've got to wiggle it a little bit to get it to fit down in there. And as it goes in, you can see how nicely uh, this thing, once it's lined up, how it just kind of pops right into place. And there you go. You got it. It's in place. And it's uh, we're ready to put the other side in. So I'll just sort of flip that around. Uh, you do want to make sure that when you do this uh, that you're not poking holes <laughs> in the side of your fuselage with this this strut right here. And that's going to simply go in with a really a really tiny screw. So I'll get the other uh, horizontal stabilizer. See again, just pull that strut back, just get it out of the way. So again, it's not uh, punching uh, into the side of your your fuselage there. Just uh, line up that spar right there. Just line this thing up into position. Let's see if we can get that uh, locked in. We're going to snap it into position. And you'll see you want to line up your elevators. You can see right down in here. You want to make sure those two line up. And bang, that thing just kind of pops into place. And then we have just these uh, two little tiny screws that are really kind of a pain to feed in. you got to feed them in sort of from underneath here and get them to go through. And then once you get them to go through, they'll go right into this hole. It's, it's pretty challenging actually getting that darn thing in there. It's, it's a, a very, very precise kind of fit in there. And there's not a lot of room to get a screwdriver in there. So once you get that in there, you just kind of tighten it up and you just uh, repeat it uh, for the other side. To finish up the elevator assembly, we have to make the, uh, the connection. So what I'm going to do is remove the clevis, take a little piece of fuel tubing that I, ins that I uh, just cut, and uh, we're going to go ahead and attach the rod to our horn, and that goes in there fairly tightly. And then we're going to get our clevis back in position here, which is a little more challenging than it appears offhand. And we're going to get that, that, get that to snap into position and taking our fuel tubing, which is what I'm going to do probably for all these linkages that have this, which I think is really only this in the rudder. And uh, that tel fuel tubing should help keep that in position. Aside from getting the uh, propeller on, this is the uh, last major step in assembly, and that's just putting the wing on. And uh, you can see how simple of a thing it is. All you have to do is just take your uh, main wing spar, just insert it into your wing. Then you go ahead and you put, uh, put this thing uh, right in place. Uh, it's in the way of my camera. <laughs> we'll go ahead and slide this down in. And uh, we'll see how this uh, fits into position here. It slides right in. And it should go in nicely and all the connections are made. And you can feel... Uh, those connections actually going uh, going into place. You can see right down here we have uh, our screw slots right here. We're just going to take uh, two of these uh, three millimeter uh, metric screws. You can see uh, see what those uh, what those look like. That's the same thing we used for the landing gear. We're going to go ahead and just uh, kind of drop those into the uh, holes. I'll grab another one. I'll drop that one into the hole right there. And then I will grab my uh, screwdriver that has turned a million screws and uh, it should go in there and thread uh, pretty nice. I can feel it. Yeah, I can feel it biting those metal threads and then coming up against the plastic. So um, you really don't need any thread lock. Uh, you could do that if you wanted to. You could put some on there, um, but you really don't need it. And you want to keep thread lock off of plastic because thread lock, if you get it on plastic, makes it brittle and it will crack. So uh, because of the plastic that's already on here, um, you can feel it bite in there and they're really secure. And that's really it, folks. Just uh, repeat it for the other wing. The very last part of the assembly is uh, just getting the propeller on. And this is a collet type drive. I knew it was going to come to me at some point, which is basically just a, a friction drive. As you tighten up uh, this screw right here, it actually squeezes this thing, pulls this part into a cone. And then the friction of uh, that actually grabs onto the uh, the shaft here. It's an older style of uh, mounting uh, these things, but uh, they actually do work pretty good and they do center well. So really all we're going to do is uh, get this collet drive in place. We may have to loosen this a little bit and tap on this a bit to get this, uh, this to fit onto the uh, motor shaft. And it, you want it to be actually kind of a tight fit. And then once it fits into place, we're going to go ahead and tighten this up. Uh, and it has to be pretty tight because it really is a, a friction type drive. It's the friction of tightening this up. You don't want it so tight that you break the propeller or anything, of course. Um, but, uh, but you do want it uh, on there uh, fairly secure. So I'll get down on there with this thing. 
one more time, just make sure it is secure. And uh, once we feel like we got it on there pretty good, uh, we'll go ahead and put the, uh, the spinner back on. Spinner just goes on here with a, uh, with a single screw. And uh, that's really it. It's just a Phillips head that goes on there. And it is important to note that even though I am putting the propeller on, uh, the first time you go about binding this thing, uh, you actually uh, do want to remove the prop so you don't have that prop on, possibly spinning and causing harm. The first step in the bonding process is just to create a new model memory and go ahead and name it. Of course, here I named mine uh, Air Tractor, and then uh, I will go ahead and go into the main menu. We'll go all the way down to System Setup. Um, we're going to go into the Disabled RF mode, and then we're going to go into Aircraft Type. It's really just this simple. We're going to go ahead and we're going to select... Uh, one aileron and one flap, even though we have two flaps, they're only on one channel, and that will set up our wing type. Uh, now we're ready to go ahead and uh, bind up the airplane. We have two options for uh, binding this uh, airplane. We can either use the, uh, the bind plug or we can use the bind button. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the, uh, the benefit of the button since we have it on this airplane, and with your radio turned off and you're ready to hold the button down and turn the switch on, we're going to go ahead and bind this thing up. I have a battery mounted, so we're going, ahead, going to go ahead and plug this thing in, and I'm going to have my radio ready with my button pressed, so I'm ready to turn this thing on. Um, when I press and hold the bind button here, you can see the, uh, the light come on. It's flashing. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn my radio on with the bind button pressed, and we're going to let this thing bind. Now that it's complete, and you can see right here, we do have a steady light. It went from flashing to steady there. I can release my bind button, and now we're bound up in AS3X mode. We heard the flight control cycle uh, twice, which means that AS3X is now enabled. So we can do a quick flight control check, make sure everything's working, and now we have a successful bind. With the binding process complete, we can now go into the uh, transmitter setup menu, and we can set up things like dual rates, uh, high at 100, low at 70, expo if you want them. I'm going to leave mine at zero because I usually don't like expo in mine. Um, that's personal preference and feel, kind of set that up the way you like it. And then you select your radio type. Since I'm using a DX9, we're going to go into, which we already did this stuff. We went into system setup, select air, airplane. We already selected the uh, wing type and named the airplane already. So. Um, one aileron and one flap we already selected. And what that's going to do is enable the flap system menu, which I'll show you here in a second. Then we'll assign the switch. Uh, we'll go into the travel and set our travel uh, to where we need everything to be. And we'll set up our elevator to flap mixing. Uh, we'll assign the switch to D and we'll uh, go uh, with a speed of two. So simply done. All we have to do here is just uh, take our radio. Uh, we'll go into the menu as we roll down here. Uh, you'll see the flap system. Now, the flap system menu is not active unless you select that wing type, which is uh, one aileron and one flap. That's what you have to do to make this uh, active, which we already did. So uh, you can see there it says inhibit. I'm going to go ahead and press it so it, uh, it flashes. And then I'm going to select switch D right here. And as I do that, it'll assign switch D. I'm going to press the, uh, the, the button on the, 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 the scroll uh, wheel here. And uh, we'll go ahead and set up everything. Uh, the way that it's uh, supposed to be. And I think we had, uh, what do we have, minus 100 in there. So let's uh, activate that. We'll go to minus 100. We'll go all the way over there. Set it up just the way it is. We're going to put an elevator to flap for the middle at 6%. So we'll put that in there, 6. We'll go to uh, position 2 of the switch. We'll put in uh, plus 100 is what it was calling for. Let's see, we'll get that all the way down in there. And we'll get that set. There it is. I'll press the button again. I'll go over here to the elevator to flap mixing for full flaps. Select 10% and we'll go down to speed. And we'll put in two. This is personal preference too. Some guys like three or so and, and so forth. So then we'll go ahead and we'll test our flaps. We want to make sure our flaps are moving. That's the up position. And of course, we're going to, we're going to want to zero everything out before we're ready to, once we get this all done, we want to make sure flaps, ailerons, elevator, everything's all zero. But we want to make sure our, our flap is moving in the proper direction. That's our takeoff setting. And that's our full flap setting. Now I noticed that when I did first set this thing up, um, that my switch was actually working the other way. So in my particular instance, 
and it all depends on where your uh, what your radio is doing or whatever. I actually had to go into the reverse menu, which is right here, and uh, I actually, as you can see here, I had to reverse my flap switch because, uh, and that's again personal preference. Personally, what I like is when the flap switch is up, the flaps are up. When I move the switch down, the flaps go down. That's personal preference, so you may just keep in mind, you may have to reverse that uh, if necessary. One of the last items of setup for your radio is uh, designating which switch is going to be a safe select switch. And it's really pretty simple to do. You hold your sticks in the middle corners or in the middle lower corners, and then you, uh, whichever switch you want it to be, you cycle it up and down five times, and you'll feel, if you read in here, you'll, you'll hear the uh, flight controls uh, just twitch a little, and that indicates that you have activated or assigned uh, a switch to be in safe select. Now, one pitfall I ran into that you got to watch out for as you read carefully here, if you have selected dual rates, you've programmed 100% and 70% in, they've got to be in 100% to assign the switch. I, I, I couldn't get mine to, 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 to assign the switch for the longest time, and then I read this and I realized, okay, I got to be at 100%. So I put my switches up. Uh, this is what I use for my aileron dual rate. This is what I use uh, for my elevator dual rate. I made sure they were up, put my switch sticks to the middle, uh, to the center and down, and then cycled it and, it and it assigned the switch. Now it is important to note too, while you're out there flying around, uh, I assigned uh, this one as my safe select switch. So with the switch in the up position, that's safe select, meaning it's it's automatically leveling your wings and your pitch. It's limiting those. And when you go down uh, to a middle or the lower position, it's now just an AS3X stabilization mode. And uh, you can do whatever you want with the airplane. So keep that in mind. Up is on for safe select and middle or down is off. Okay, folks, that pretty much uh, concludes this video on uh, E-Flight's 1.5 meter air tractor. This is a really sweet airplane, very nice fitting model, very easy to assemble. And as you can see, very easy to set up. Um, the very next things that I'm going to do to it before I get it out to the flying field is uh, I first need to make sure my flight controls are neutralized. I noticed I had a flap a little up, one's a little down. Sometimes the linkages are not perfect from the factory. So using the easy connectors, I'll adjust them, make sure everything's neutral. Same thing with your elevator, same thing with your rudder. I noticed my rudder's a little off. You want to make sure everything's neutralized. And then Set the center of gravity. Make sure the center of gravity is good with the battery that you're using. I'll fly this on some three and four cells, but primarily I'll be using a four cell because I know this thing is going to truck right along with a four cell. And I have that one in here. It's a 3200 Smart Pack. And right now, the way it's set up, it's actually balancing right now at about uh, 65 uh, millimeters right on this line. We'll talk about that during the flight demos. Those videos will be available on the RC Informer YouTube channel and also in the upper right hand corner. If you click on that white eye with the circle in it right now, you'll get a drop down menu with the other videos that are in the series, the other flight demos or anything else I do on this airplane will be up there. We do most of our, our videos uh, that way. Um, really sweet airplane folks overall. The details on it are pretty awesome, uh, especially the wingtip lights. You can see right there, it's not only has the red nav light, uh, but it also has the uh, the white flasher on there. Same thing with the other side. It's got the green nav light uh, with the uh, flashing uh, sort of simulated strobe. And then, of course, uh, the landing lights are out of this world. Look at these things. I'll point them straight at the camera. Hopefully, I get them. They're pretty blinding. And this is going to be a great dusk flyer airplane also because it's yellow. And it's going to really stand out, especially if you have you know, a background of uh, terrain or trees or something. But even up in the sky with a bright sky and even a dusk sky, this will stand out because of its color and its shape and the good lighting that's on it. So anyway, I am dying to get this one out there. Folks, if you guys are interested in getting one of these and you decide uh, to get one through Horizon, if you use our links in the description below, um, you put it in your cart and buy one, um, we do get a small commission for that and we do appreciate that, folks. Everything we do here at RC Informer is free for you guys. We're always trying to put out the uh, best information we uh, can give you guys. And any support you guys can give us is greatly appreciated. Uh, otherwise, folks, if you want to see the new videos coming out, whatever we have coming out in the future, please like, uh, comment, subscribe, uh, hit that notification bell in the lower right-hand corner, and that'll notify you when we get new videos out. So anyway, folks, thanks for watching RC Informer. Stay tuned, and we'll see you next time.